Oh, you mean like, like take one or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> My name is Shanlyn James. I live in San Antonio, Texas, and I'm a worship pastor. Who or what influenced me to do what I do? I have to go back to when I came to know the Lord. Um, it was his, the love of the, the fact that God could love me how I was amazed me. And that's what drew me. I didn't grow up in church. I got, I, I came to the Lord uh, at the age of 15, right before I turned 16. And when I heard the message for the first time about how God loved me and He wanted to have a relationship with me, and, I, and it's nothing that I had to do um, on my own to, to get His love, because you know how they, there's that old song, um, searching for love in all the wrong places. Well, you know, that's what I was doing. But to know that somebody loved me just as I was, that was very compelling to me. So that's what pulled me uh, to have a relationship with the Lord. And after that, I got introduced to Hosanna, uh, which was a worship, this worship music. Um, and I started listening to it, and the songs on, the, the, on that worship music drew me into a time with the Lord um, and to, and to uh, um, His presence. And some of the... Um, some of the artists that were there, one of them that was, touched me was Kent Henry. He had these songs, you know, um, that he that he uh, had on that worship album at the time, and um, and so it drew me into to worship, and I started having a desire for worship. Also, another person that was really impactful f for me at the time was my youth pastor, Phil Johnson. And he asked myself and my brother, because he knew that we were musically inclined because we played instruments, if we wanted to be a part of the worship team at, a, at this youth group. And so, of course, we said yes, and we came. And so, and I had never had any kind of vocal training or anything like that, but I just had a heart to want to worship God. I just love God. I just wanted to worship Him and uh, didn't care how I sounded or whatever. My implied responsibilities as a worship pastor is the responsibility of the worship gathering um, regarding how we're going to do the welcome, uh, the worship part, uh, where the announcements are going to fall in place, and how we're going to, uh, into the transitioning of the, of the pastor coming up to speak, and then also uh, the closing of the worship gathering. Also, sometimes the elements of that is um, when we're, where we're going to do communion, because we, sometimes we do communion during worship time, and sometimes we do communion at the very end. And um, some other responsibilities with that is gathering uh, and seeking the Lord about what songs that are on His heart or what the, what the Spirit of the Lord is, is uh, and prompting me at the moment uh, to lead our congregation into worship. And uh, so because of that, there's time that's spent away, that you spend at home seeking the Lord. And actually, w what I have experienced is that when I'm spending time with the Lord at home, a lot of times um, it's almost as if when, as I'm worshiping, I'm, 
I know what's going to happen that Sunday in worship. These ideas start to come into my and and into my into my mind. I know they're by the Holy Spirit, of of how to transition a song, or maybe something experiential that we're going to do during worship. Those things happen as you're spending time with the Lord, and I know it's because He wants to during the time of our worship. A gathering, he wants to touch the people a certain way, and I don't know who's going to be at the worship at our worship gathering, but the Lord does, and so because of that, there may be certain songs that He wants um, us to sing because they're going to minister to the people that are there. When they see the words, it's going to touch their heart. It's going to cause them to want to know Him. Uh, some of the unimplied responsibilities that I have experienced is. Uh, we don't have a sound guy, so what happens is that when I get there, I have to set up the keyboard because the keyboard is taken down and the guitar. Um, those are some responsibilities, they are responsibilities, but sometimes uh, it can come on you at the moment. So although I may not have been trained in sound because of your heart to serve God and what you want to do, you end up having to you learn these things. And so. Um, at the last moment that may happen, or if the sanctuary is, uh, is dirty and you come in and you're the first one there, then you may have to pick up, make sure everything looks neat, uh, put things uh, put things away because other people are going to be coming in. So it's really picking up the slack and just having a, uh, I guess, uh, you know, uh, just a heart to uh, to be open to God and whatever whatever He wants you to do, you know, and to the pastor and the leaders that are there. Uh, and also to the worship team. Somebody may call you, they're sick, uh, that, that happens all the time. So you're, you're like, Lord, you know, what's, what's going to happen? Who's going to fill in that spot? If, especially if it's a, some of the main um, positions that you need, you know, a drummer, and uh, something happens, they're not able to be there. And that's happened before where the drummer doesn't come, and so you know what? And it ends up being an acoustic type of worship. You just got to work with it. Before I take the stage, before we take the stage, I've already had a we've already had a sound check. We've already prayed as a group. As I, I'm talking about the worship team, we've already prayed. So, actually, when we go back to our seats and we're about to take the stage, I, I tell I for my this is for myself and for the worship, and for our worship team. This is what I encourage them to do: is not to get distracted because people start coming and start wanting things, and because you have the keys to certain places, they need to have open and all that. But to stay before, um, stay before the Lord, and keep and having that mindset that you want to uh, be in a place that you're able to lead others into His presence, and so, um, so there is a bit of, I guess you would say, uh, protection. Like you want to protect that time. Um, so it could seem like uh, to others that you may be standoffish or whatever. But you're not standoffish, and I am open to talk to people. But what I have to realize is that I'm about to go before the the king of all glory and and I want and I want to bring our worship before his throne so that he can come and inhabit our praise and come and sit upon our worship and so I want to make sure that I'm in a in a good spirit and a, in a good place so some of the emotions that I uh, that I'm uh, feeling I guess are uh, the anticipation I have this anticipation of what's about to take place and with that anticipation um, I don't have like a, I don't, there's not necessarily a nervousness because I know that God is in control, but there is an anticipation of what He's going to do. After we've okay, so after we finished our worship, we've we've gone through, we've worshipped, we're there, we're lingering. A lot of times uh, after that, not after the worship gathering, but as you're there, and because of what you've experienced and what you've uh, 
a lot, uh, what you've experienced during that time, there is a there is a uh, sense of awe, wonder that that God could uh, use use you f for for this for this time and of what He's doing. Also, there's a sensitivity of what's going on in the room. So as I'm there at the keyboard. And as I'm there, and it's it's transitioning for the pastor when he's about to come up, there's a sensitivity because a lot of times the it's not over yet because God is still speaking to the pastor, and he pastor may ask for another worship song. So then, there's that uh, you don't know that it's going to happen, but he's asking for a song that you don't have the music for, and uh, so you have to be ready for that. Some things that I like to do besides being a worship pastor. Um, I like to exercise. <laughs> this past this uh, past year, I joined uh, CrossFit. Um, our pastor had had preached a message about getting ourselves together spiritually, physically, financially, and I had never focused on myself physically, getting myself together physically. So, um, my cousin introduced me to this CrossFit, and I was like, "I'll try it." You know, it's very intense, but I I've, I've never grew up in doing sports, running that kind of stuff. But I find that um, I really like it, and the discipline of it has actually helped me to be even more disciplined over here uh, in my relationship with, the, with God. So that's some things that I like to do. I like to exercise, uh, keep myself healthy. I love cooking. I'm a better cook now than I've ever been in my life. <laughs> and uh, so I enjoy that. I enjoy, uh, and enjoy cooking healthy. Uh, another thing that I love is I love animals, so I really enjoy, I have two dogs, and I really enjoy them, and uh, I enjoy my family, spending time with my family, my friends, um, going out to eat. I go out to eat not because I enjoy the food, but I enjoy the company. And I really go out to eat, and as I told one of my friends recently, is that, is that because I, once you learn to cook and you like to cook, you enjoy your food more than you enjoy f uh, going out to eat at a restaurant. And so, but... The reason why I say that is because I enjoy fellowship, I enjoy friendships and, and things like that, and I think that's important. If I wasn't a worship pastor, what would I see myself doing? I would see myself serving, um, helping out others, uh, helping their dreams come true. I like to, I like to help people out. Um, that's just a part of me, and making their life easier. Um, Whatever, whatever, the, whatever it is, I like to, to do that, whether it be in, my, uh, in church or out of church. If I see that there's a need, it's just there. And I, I, have, a de I have a desire to help them and just to pick up the slack. And uh, so I think that that would be one of the things that I would do uh, is to serve in the community, serve wherever I can serve. I think that as far as a career, I'd probably be a veterinarian. Yeah. Why I do what I do, first of all, is because of the love that that, that I have uh, that I have for God and His love for me. As I have said before, how He drew me, and it was His love that that drew me. That's what caused me to want to know Him. It was His love, and so. Because of that, I know that there's a scripture that says to come before Him with thanksgiving, to come before Him with praise. That's how our entry into His presence. And because of that, that's why I do what I do, because that is the doorway into, into His heart. He wants us to come to Him, and, and I, I feel that I can express myself to Him that way through, uh, through song and through music and my love for Him. My name is Shailen James and that is why I do what I do.
I want to go out to eat more with her, but I actually told her. <laughs> yeah, she's one of the influences in my life, too.